This video is going to show you how to convert back and forth from scientific notation to decimal notation. First, we need a little bit of vocabulary. When I'm looking at this, this number is in scientific notation. This whole piece to the left of the X symbol is the, called the mantissa or the significant. We're going to refer to it as the mantissa in this video. This is the exponent. So I'm going to talk about what happens to the mantissa and what happens to the exponents. You need to make sure you understand what these two pieces are for a number in scientific notation. This number is also in scientific notation, so here are some parts to think about. This negative sign in front of everything is the sign of the entire number. In scientific notation, there's always one digit to the left of the decimal. In scientific notation, there's any number of digits to the right of the decimal. You always write times 10 to the something, and then there's an exponent, and the negative sign is the negative sign of the exponent. Here's some examples of numbers that are written in scientific notation. 3.49 times 10 to the 6th. That's in scientific notation. One digit to the left of the decimal, any number to the right, and then my exponent. Here's another expression that's in scientific notation. 1.6721 times 10 to the negative 3. The 1, one digit to the left of the decimal. Here's another number, but it's not in scientific notation. So this is an exponential notation. I need to put it in scientific notation. So I'll move the decimal over, and as I move the decimal over, that's going to change the power of 10. Now it's in scientific notation because I have one number to the left of the decimal. So let's talk about the movement of that decimal. Here's a little refresher. Here are my numbers. These are in powers of 10. From 10 to the 4th all the way down the bottom to 10 to the negative 4th. If I look at this in terms of the actual numbers, I can see that as I go up the scale, the numbers get bigger. And as I go down the scale, the numbers get smaller. The key thing is to remember when dealing with negative numbers, or negative exponents, not negative numbers, but negative exponents. As negative exponents get smaller, it's actually getting up to be a larger number. If you look on the right in the blue numbers, you can see that here. As the negative exponents get larger, that is the actual value of the number gets larger, then the number itself is getting smaller. So it's kind of the opposite of what we usually think about. A little bit more to think about. 10 to the 0, that's the same as 1. So if I have 451, that's the same as 451 times 10 to the 0 but there's no need to write 10 to the 0, so we leave it as 451. But it is there, it's just that there's no need to write it. So I have 451. Let's start with this number and convert it over to scientific notation. When you see a number, the first thing you think about is a decimal point going on the right. We don't write that down all the time, but think of it as being there. Scientific notation has one digit to the left of the decimal. So I've got to make 451 look like 4.51, then times 10 to the sum exponent. This means I'm going to move the decimal over one place, and then a second place, so it's between the 4 and the 5. So I've made 451 smaller by 2 powers of 10. Every time I move a decimal, that's a power of 10 change. So 2 powers of 10 smaller for the 451, that means my exponent's going to do the opposite. It's going to become 2 powers of 10 larger. So it becomes 10 to the second. So 4.51 times 10 to the second. So whatever happens to the mantissa, the exponent does the opposite. 23,000 put my decimal point in the end, I want it to get to 2.3 times 10 to the something. So I'm going to look at how many times I'm going to move my decimal. One, two, three, four times. And that's four times smaller. So that's four powers of 10 smaller for moving the decimal. That means my exponent is going to be four powers of 10 larger. So that becomes 2.3 times 10 to the fourth. Now let's look at a decimal. 0 0.003. So I want to turn that into 3 times 10 to the something. If I look at this, this time I'm going to move the decimal to the right instead of to the left. So I'm making 0 .003 larger to get to 0 .3. So that became 3 powers of 10 by 3 decimal moves, 3 powers of 10 larger. So that means 10 to the something has got to be 3 powers of 10 smaller. So that's going to make it negative 3. So let's look at a number that's already in exponential notation and see how to change it into scientific notation. 123.8 times 10 to the negative 7. I want to turn that to 1.23 times 10 to the something. All right, to move that decimal place over between the 1 and the 2, I've got to move it over two places. So 123 to 1.23, that means I made it smaller. So that's 2 powers of 10 smaller, which means I've got to make my exponent 2 powers of 10 larger. But it's a negative 7. So when dealing with negative exponents to make it larger, the actual number gets smaller. So in this case, it goes to negative 5. Okay, so now let's work the other direction. Let's go to decimal form. 6.80 times 10 to the 4th. Well, I want to get 10 to the 4th down to 10 to the 0. That's the thing we don't normally write. 
which means I've got to make the exponent four times smaller. Remember, whatever happens to the exponent, the opposite happens to the mantissa. So the exponent gets four times smaller. That means that the mantissa has got to get four times larger. So I'm going to move my decimal point to the right to make it bigger. Four spaces. 2.9 times 10 to the negative 6. So the negative 6, I've got to get to 0. So I've got to add 6 powers of 10 to move it up and make it larger. Well, if that's getting larger, then my mantis has got to get smaller. So I'm going to move the decimal point to the left. So here's my number, and here my decimal point moves. Six of them to the left to make that number smaller. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. I've got to get 23rd smaller to get it down to 10 to the 0. So I've got to have 23 moves smaller. That means I've got to have 23 powers of 10 or 23 decimal moves larger on the mantissa. So this becomes a really long number that I'm not going to talk about. And then these are all the decimal point moves. 23 of them to make the number larger. So now let's look at a calculator and how to enter this on the TI calculator. So this works on a TI-81, TI-82, TI-83, or TI-84, 89. So I start with um, the calculator, and I want to look at 4 times 10 to the negative, or 10, 4 times 10 to the 6 in terms of how to enter it on the calculator. So I'm going to magnify the keyboard. To enter this, I'm going to press the number 4, and then I'm going to press 2nd. And we'll go down to the comma key, and above the comma key, that's what I'm after, it's EE. -E. Now, your calculator is color-coded, so the blue all matches up, second and the EE. -E. And see on the calculator screen itself, there's a letter E. So I'm going to use that, and then I'll finish it by typing the number 6. And then a 6 appears on the calculator screen. So that's 4 times 10 to the 6. That E attaches the 4 and the 6 together. Do not use the caret symbol that raises things to a power. That's the wrong thing to do. That's because 4e to the 6 is treated as one number. But if you use the caret symbol, what's going to happen is you're going to type your screen. It's going to look like this, 4 times 10 caret 6. And this is actually treated as two numbers, not one number. So if you try squaring this, just putting a square on the outside, it'll square 10 to the 6, but it won't square the 4. Or if you try dividing some number by this, it'll divide it by the 4 and then multiply everything by 10 to the 6, which is not what you're intending. You need to always use the E key, the second EE -E key. Do not use the caret symbol, mainly because that caret symbol treats everything as two numbers, and that's not what you're intending. You want that to be one number. Now, the reason why this was done is because there's a limited number of spaces on the calculator screen. And the E notation saves spaces. Because if I look at it, E takes one, one of those 14 spaces. But if I type times or x10, or say asterisk 10, that's three spaces. So calculator companies did this to save space on the screen. If you're doing work and you're turning it in, if you write a number and you write it as, say, 4.5 E to the 6, that's not correct. Because that's basically calculator speak or geek speak. It's not what we're looking for. You need to write that as 4.5x 10 to the 6. This is formal writing, and that's what you're doing when you're writing your math steps in here. So the way to think about this is think about your calculator as kind of like a cell phone. It's texting you the answer to save space. That's the purpose of texting, carrying out a message by saving space. And texting is not accepted in formal writing. For example, if you were to write a line in a play for an English teacher, you wouldn't write this all this text. Instead, you write it formally, out in the language that we all understand and everyone can interpret. 